What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're looking at the new X-Pro3. Now I've been shooting with this camera for over a week and I've been putting it through its paces, been shooting with it a lot. I could have called this a first hands-on impression, but honestly, I feel like I've used it enough that I could call it a full review. Now obviously I can't fit every single spec and feature into this video, but I'm gonna cover the main things, go over the main features and things they've added to this camera that set it apart from other Fuji cameras. I will say that I don't know if this camera's for everyone because Fuji's kind of made a bold choice with this camera and kind of gave the user more of an authentic analog photographic experience. And I feel that's kind of what they've always done with the X-Pro line. You know, my first Fuji camera was the X-Pro2 and I raved about the experience because it was so different than what I'd ever used at the time. And it's no different with this camera. But let's get into the specs. There are a lot that are pretty similar to the X-T3, but also very different. It's got a 26 megapixel X-Trans4 BSI sensor. Uh, this is a rangefinder camera, so it has an OVF and an EVF. Uh, the OVF obviously has a heads up display and the EVF is bright, it's 3.69 million dots and they've really bragged about the contrast being 5,000 to one. Now it does have a flip down display, it's 1.62 million dots. I'll come back to this in a bit because we need to talk about that. Uh, it does have a color LCD sub display, 425 phase detected all focus points covering the sensor. It can focus in low light down to negative six EV, which is amazing because no other Fuji camera has done this until now. Normally it's negative three EV. It has 11 frames per second mechanical shutter in high speed continuous shooting, 20 frames per second electronic shutter with no crop, and then 30 frames per second with a 1.25 times crop. It can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second 8 bit. There's no 4K 60 or 10 bit. It does have the awesome 120 frames per second 1080p. It does have dual UHS-2 card slots, as well as the 2.5 millimeter mic jack and USB type C, and definitely improved weather sealing. And getting into the build quality of this camera, the camera is titanium. So the top and the bottom frame are titanium, the internals are magnesium. The camera feels and looks top quality, which we've come to expect from the X-Pro line. Comes in three different colors and they're all built out of titanium. So there's half black, Dura Silver and Dura Black, which I have right now. And I definitely think it looks sexy. It's kind of got this matte, like gunmetal, space gray look to it. But I do find that the fingerprint oils left behind kind of fingerprint it really easy. But you might actually like that. It kind of looks cool. It kind of gives it kind of an older vintage worn feel. So yeah, everything's metal in the X-Pro3. So uh, let's start with the top here. On the top we have the ISO and shutter combo dial, kind of like an old film camera. Uh, beside that is the exposure compensation dial. And then above that, there's a small blank black customizable button, and then you're on and off switch. On the front, there's a lever obviously to change between your OVF and EVF, and also the front command dial. And on this command dial, you can't actually push it in this time. They've kind of changed that. On the back is where you're definitely gonna see the big changes coming in from the other X-Pro cameras. First off, they remove the D-pad. So just like the X-T30, now some people are probably gonna complain about this, but I actually didn't think it was that big of a deal. You know, you can pretty much do everything with the joystick. Now moving on above the Q button, we have a blank customizable button, which has been programmed out of the box to cycle through your film simulations. And I actually kind of like that, but uh, you can customize it to whatever you want. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The sub LCD has replaced the location for the main screen. I totally get what Fuji's doing and I think it was kind of a bold move to do this. I already know the comment section is probably gonna be split on this design choice and I get it. It's definitely not for everyone, but on the sub display, you can actually show the film simulation you're on as well as the ISO, or you can change it up to display all your settings similar to like the sub display on the X-H1. Flipping down the lid reveals the screen and the screen flips down to 180 degrees, which makes shooting from the hip or down low nice, but it isn't that awesome if you have to shoot above your head and you can't really see the screen. So jumping into image quality, I'm gonna pop some images up throughout the review from shoots I've done with this camera. Honestly, in my opinion, nothing really matches the look of Fuji straight out of camera. The shooting experience I have has been good with this camera. It's actually been awesome. I uh, never experienced any issues with the beta firmware. Uh, the camera does come with all the film simulations, all the new ones, uh, well, previous new ones, but it also comes with one new one, which is really awesome, I love. It's called Classic Negative. It's got this warm, contrasty, vintage 70s vibe to it that kind of turns the reds to rusty and pushes the shadows to kind of like a bluish green look. Um, obviously, I can't open up the RAW file, so you're definitely gonna be seeing the JPEGs straight from the camera. I don't know if the new features are coming in new firmware updates to other cameras in the future, but they really focused on in-camera processing on this camera. Uh, they've added new options like tone curve, so you can adjust the highlights and shadows. There's also a new option to add clarity in camera. 
Uh, they've also added the option monochromatic color. So when you're shooting in monochrome, you can actually change the color to like fully red or fully blue, which is kind of cool. Now, when it comes to video, I shot a few things, but Fuji didn't really make this camera for shooting video. And they left out things like 400 megabits per second, 4K 60, 10 bit video, but it can still do up to 30 frames per second at 200 megabits, 8 bit, but only for 15 minutes. It does have IAF and video as well as improved video autofocus. There's still F log if you want to shoot log. And finally, it definitely has the best 120 frames per second 1080p next to the X-T3. Now when it comes to continuous autofocus tracking, it has all the same features the X-T3 has, uh, same with the IAF. I found this camera to perform equally as well as the X-T3, it might even feel a little faster. Uh, I do think that this has newer algorithms again for improvements in autofocus, um, so that might be coming down the road to other cameras. But uh, yeah, I just want to mention it because it's really fast. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Walk towards the camera, go for it. Look towards the camera, look back off. Look back, look back towards the camera. Okay, <laughs> I just took a million photos. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I feel like I just hit you with a ton of info and shared a bunch of samples, but there are a few other things and a few other features that I've really mentioned and I'm not really gonna go over too much, but it does have in-camera HDR, interval shooting, custom autofocus range limiting, obviously has a touch screen, but I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on a few things. Uh, before you go out and buy one or just hate on this camera. I already know a lot of people are gonna give this camera a hard time and say it's 2019, the Sony does this, and the X-T3 does this for less money. But this camera's unique. Fuji's offering a different experience with this camera. Do I love the fact that the screen isn't facing the right way? No, I'm not a huge fan. But this camera really wasn't made for me. This camera slows you down. It gives you a mechanical analog experience. Keeps you from chimping, which is kind of nice to be honest. They want to keep this sort of separate from anything else they make. Um, and they really want to keep it photo focused over like hybrid shooting, video and photos. And I mean, I get that, it's cool. I think that if you primarily shoot photos and enjoy the classic look and feel of shooting with a rangefinder, then this is probably up your alley. I've already talked about the removal of the D-pad and obviously the screen that's flipped around the wrong way. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting is that they've also removed the HDMI port. That's why I wasn't able to give you guys like a nice clean output showing the autofocus. I had to record the back of the screen. But again, they're trying to keep it photo focused. All right, so I need to bring up one more gripe and that's the battery life. I bring this up every single time I review a Fuji camera because they continue to use the same battery, the MPW126S, and it's not that great. It's supposed to be improved over the X-Pro2, but I still noticed I really wasn't getting the best. It's rated at like 370 shots without boost mode using the EVF, but obviously your mileage will vary. So you're gonna need like three to four batteries throughout the day. I wish they would have put a larger battery in it, but I guess the upside is that you can power it through the USB-C port off a battery bank. And that reminds me, you can also use the USB port for a headphone dongle since it doesn't have a headphone jack. All right, that basically covers everything except for the price and this camera isn't cheap, but I guess that kind of depends on what you're comparing it to. So the body starts at $23.99 Canadian or $17.99 US. And I think the Dura Black, which I have here, is a little bit more expensive. I think it's around $19.99 USD. But if you are thinking about buying this camera or pre-ordering it, I'll put links in the description where you can get that. And uh, yeah, stay tuned and get subscribed for a BTS video on one of the shoots I did with the X-Pro3. I posted a few shots in here, but uh, stay tuned for the full video. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello? Billy, is that you? Wrong number. It has Yule, Yule, and a USB teep, teep. USB type C. Teep, teep C. What, there's no HDMI port in this thing? How am I supposed to record the screen to show the autofocus setting? What, there's no 4K 60? You can only record for 15 minutes? <laughs> I got this new setup too. I like the lighting, it's, it's looking good. Move my room around a bit. You guys like it? I guess I'll find out in the comments.